Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good evening. Hi. <laughs> it's nice to see you. I hope you can see me and hear me well. Let me just adjust the camera slightly. Okay. So welcome to this online Teledance Museum tour. I'm very happy you are joining me in this special event. It, um, it had to have some proper planning. Uh, so let me uh, tell you a few uh, words uh, before we go into the collection. First of all, I want to thank all the artists who participated in the gala show. Thank you guys so much for your beautiful performances. I hope you enjoyed the gala show yesterday. If you didn't see it, it's still on our website. Just go to our website and uh, press the button shows and go to gala show and watch. So I hope you will like it. Once again, thank you very much, everybody. Now, this uh, one hour we are going to have together will be actually going through some really, really old items. I don't consider myself a um, belly dance or a Raksharki historian, because for that, I think I would need to do much more research than I do. I rather think about myself as a collector and definitely I'm collecting a lot of stuff. So the word collector is absolutely correct. And the stuff I collect is uh, connected to Raksharki, mostly uh, to Raksharki uh, in Egypt. The collection so far has around 450 items. Uh, I don't provide, provide you with correct number because I received a package from Cairo just a week ago and I still didn't register all the, all the items in my little archive. So it is a lot and don't worry, we are not going to go through all 450 items because that would be for, um, for a whole weekend, I guess, to really show you everything. But um, I'm going to show you one of the, the most beautiful ones I think I, I have in the collection. Uh, I'm also not going to provide too much uh, history behind it because I would just repeat what was already said during this festival and I wouldn't get 
too far if I would just start to explain what we see on each picture in, the, in detail. So uh, that's how it's going to be. We are going to change stations. I'm even going to grab my camera and really do a little tour. And you can see I have gloves on my uh, hands because some of the items I have here are extremely old. Uh, some of them are from even uh, 1700, 1776. So it's super old, uh, but these I have framed and some of the items I have over here, I really have to be careful to not to, uh, to damage them. So it will be a lot of uh, manipulation and I have to be very careful. So be patient with me. It will be a little bit interactive as well uh, because we are going to listen to something very special and we are going to see something in 3D. So each of you, you have um, received uh, an email where I asked you if you have to have your 3D glasses ready. I'm not sure if everybody has it. I know it's not just <laughs> common to have, hey, I have 3D glasses at home, but if you have, uh, have them ready, there will be one minute of uh, something special for you. You can see in 3D based on real historic items. And also we have the competition. Uh, about uh, that there was this quiz uh, we've sent around and we received plenty of uh, correct answers. So I'm going to pick randomly one name and that winner will win this historic postcard. Okay, this one. Uh, can you see it? Camera, work, don't focus on my face. Ah, hopefully it will focus in a bit. So uh, this item will be will be uh, sent by post, but re by real post, <laughs> not just by email or anything like that. So this you can this you can win, all right? I think it's time to get started. You can type your questions in the chat, but let me probably go first through all the items. So I'm sure that I did all I wanted to do. And later on when we have discussion, let's discuss, okay? Voila. Let's get started. Uh, I have in, in the collection, I have like two parts or three parts uh, to be correct. One part is focused on belly dance in Western world. I don't pay too much attention to it, but uh, some items are really important. So I collect them as well, but I'm not going to talk about them right now. I'm going to talk about pre-golden era in Egypt and golden era in Egypt. What I mean by pre-golden era, that's a term I'm, I'm, I started to use, but I'm even not sure if it's correct to use, is the time period, let's say from 1890s or even sooner, 1800, well, actually, sorry, completely sooner than that. Uh, even in 18th century, I have some items to, to, put, uh, to show you and until uh, 1890s, uh, 1900s. So that time period we are going to address right now. So as you can see behind me, uh, there are plenty of items from postcards and engravings from the time period of 1700s, 1800s, 1900s, we do have, or especially 1800s, we have engravings. So let me just take the camera with me. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Okay. I don't want to show you the mess around, so I will rather show the ceiling. Okay. And here we go together. So let me start with the first item here. That is this one. Uh, this item, this item was actually, not the particular item, but the engraving was done in 1738. Uh, by Richard Pocock. <laughs> I hope I said the, the, the name correctly. You can see that here, this one is a dancing girl according to, to his uh, description. And next to her is a, is a musician. Can you tell me, can you see it focused or not? Not much, right? Yeah, it's fine? Okay, good, 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 perfect. Because I'm not sure what I would have to do <laughs> to make it better. So this one is from 1738. 
you can see also on the the, the way uh, the drawing is done that it's really really old. Uh, this item, I mean the the paper, the real one I have, is probably a bit older from some uh, prints later on. But uh, unfortunately, I don't know from what year because you know all these collections are coming from normal people that their grandma or grandpa did collect it and they don't know themselves and I would have to pay somebody to to find out and I don't have the financial means to to find <laughs> the date for each of the engraving I have. Behind this item there is a battery pack <laughs> and also this engraving. Uh, this engraving is from 1700s 17, 1776. It is from a book, Reise uh, naar Arabische en andere Omlichen de Landen, Tada, that was my uh, Dutch, uh, meaning trip or, or not tour, yeah, like, yeah, let's say trip to Arabic and under uh, uh, other, I think Omlichen is like, like, something like water, foreign <laughs> lands. Sorry, you see that I'm just starting with my Dutch. But here in the middle, you can see, you can see the dancers standing over there. Again, I just want to mention one thing. Uh, not everything we see in the sources is perfect and accurate de depiction. Many times the people, uh, not, not always the artists, truly traveled into these places. Like, okay, this one is from travels. Uh, it was done during that traveling, but not every artist did it. And also they didn't draw it just on the spot. Sometimes they put, not sometimes, they always put their view into it, their, their ideas as well, how the Orient should look, okay? So the fact that her breast is naked, that, that can be part of discussion and maybe there will be other people who would be more experienced to talk about that if uh, how much accurate it is. Here's another engraving. This is from 1807. Ah, and here I have actually certificates that uh, these are true uh, engravings from those uh, years, not reprints in 20th century or anything like that. So these are truly original. And you can feel it when you hold the paper in your hands. It's, or in your gloves, <laughs> it's really fragile. So I have it framed and I didn't want to open it. So sorry for the reflection, I know. I know there is a reflection of light, but for the safety, that's what I have to do. So here on this engraving, you can see uh, here, um, like let's say common woman. And here is, ah, uh, can you see my finger? <laughs> and here is the dancing, uh, dancing girl, you can see that uh, she is uh, not veiled. So that's uh, one important thing. And I'm sure you notice the pyramids to be pretty off <laughs> the, the ratios. And that can be caused by different factors. Uh, it could be that the author just wanted to squeeze them there or never saw pyramids, just knew about them. Okay, it's also possible. So, this is one of the top shelves over here. I'm not going to talk about every item. Here we go down into my favorite part as well. Uh, here the postcards are depicting dancers around 1900s. And already here we have my favorite postcard. This postcard shows dancers in El Dorado. El Dorado was one of the first entertainment places in Cairo. Nisa was talking about it uh, in her lecture. And here you can see the first early Raksharki dancers. That's, that's when it all started. I don't mean in El Dorado, but I mean that, that time period, okay? Uh, here's another postcard from El Dorado uh, depicting the musicians and singers. This postcard is just so gorgeous. Here you can see beautifully the costume of the of the dancer, and it's colored. Okay, so it's not a color um, color photography; it's colored. Um, yeah, it's colored. You can see the beautiful ribbon belt. Shining was uh, making a tutorial how to make it. You can see the beautiful decoration and so on. 
Uh, here I have one postcard. Sometimes this dancer over here is, um, is being said that this is Pamba Kashar. Maybe, could be. Um, I don't have any proof that this truly is Pamba Kashar. Might be, might be. According to the appearance and what we have as sources, it might be, but I don't have a proof proof. So here we go to another section. Okay, let me, sorry. Oh, it's good that you don't see what's happening behind the camera. <laughs> oh, okay, so here I have another uh, beautiful section. Uh, this is another gorgeous uh, dancer. Uh, also, I have to say, you know, who, who do we see here, actually? Who are these people? It depends. It depends on the photographer. It depends on the, on the, on the place as well. Sometimes, sometimes they use just random girls uh, posing as oriental dancers, sometimes in a studio. But sometimes they asked uh, probably real dancers to show up and be photographed because they have these uh, dance costumes. You know, not the random girl in, uh, in Cairo would have dance costume at home, of course. So uh, these dancers you see here or here on these postcards are probably the early Raksharki dancers uh, they existed. I know they are referred many times as Gawazi dancers in literature and so on. It's fine, like it depends how you how you probably define it or, or it's, it's, a, it's a long story. I just want to make it clear that who would you photograph in, even in your studio or in, a, in, in the real club like over here, because all these are studios photos you see here. Well, you want to photograph somebody you can approach as a Western photographer. I forgot to say, these are mostly Western photographers, well, not mostly, only <laughs> Western photographers who did this photography I have here on the postcards. Who would you photograph? Uh, somebody from a village away from Cairo who is not easily to be reached by you? Well, if you, if you have residence um, there, of course, that would be easier. But if you are based in Cairo, you rather approach dancers who are performing every night uh, in a close by entertainment place, right? So I think I think that most of these dancers were rather early Raksharki dancers than um, Gawazi or Awalim, because Awalim dancers who would perform at weddings also as a Westerner, not easy to approach, right? But the dance costuming was very similar to, to those at the South as well, because we have some postcards and photographs that come from south of Egypt, where we had Gawazi dancers. So yes, some of the dancers could be Gawazi indeed. All right. So let me get back. Let me show you my ceiling so you don't see the mess around. <laughs> you know, work in place. And hello again. Yes, I see you again. Now, let me show you some other items I have uh, prepared over here. These two are Carte de Visit, visit uh, I'm sorry for my French and Arabic later on. Ah, I'm gone, right? I see. Let me just put the camera on again. Sometimes it has some troubles. Uh, I'm there? I think so. No? I saw my face already. <laughs> oh, one more time. Sorry, sorry, guys. Hmm? Am I there? You, you don't see me, right? No. Ah, because I need to press the button start video. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Technology and um, common sense, right? Okay, never mind. I'm back. So here, these cards are are truly special. Maybe let me let me remove this from the from the packaging. Oh my god, this is so nice. You know, guys, if you would hold it, they are very thick. These cards. So these 
uh, cards. Let me focus it not on my face. Okay, so these cards uh, were produced in late 19th century and people used to collect these cards and exchange. I'm sorry, it's still focusing on everything else than, than the card. Oh, camera work. I think Shining had the same problem yesterday with the ribbon belt. Okay, guys, sorry for that. But you can go to my online uh, belly dance museum to, to see it uh, much better. This is from 1860. And these cards were collected by mostly Westerners and they were exchanging. You know how um, you have sometimes the stickers in chocolates or chewing gums and kids are exchanging, hey, I want to have elephant. I have already three monkeys or something like that. So people were, uh, oh, now that sounds horrible how I say it uh, with comparison with animals, right? Uh, but people were exchanging this, these cards from different places, not just from Oriental world or whatever, uh, whatever places. Although, and I'm already talking about it, in that time period, Westerners were actually treating people from um, Middle East and other countries like animals. I have to be honest like that, because, because all those amazing world expositions they used to be like in Paris, Chicago, Geneva, even here in Kent, uh, in Belgium. All those expositions, they sound incredible, right? They were building new buildings, new streets, new theaters. They were hiring mostly uh, native people to work there. They were paid, for example, dancers um, from, from Cairo or, or groups of musicians and entertainers entertainers were took to, to Chicago to perform over there for a year. That sounds amazing. But at most of the world expositions, there existed this human zoos. I don't know if you heard about it, but seriously, it was like a human zoo. They let the people, the, the natives to be there in their traditional clothes. So sometimes it was really not enough clothing and it was cold. For example, here in Belgium, it's, <laughs> it's pretty cold. And and the Westerners were just going from one place, from one corner to look at the, the people like, hmm, okay, let's see another animal. Seriously, it was disgusting. So we have to keep it in mind that there is always a dark side to all of this beauty we, we think uh, there is because no people, unfortunately, uh, not acted well in past nor in uh, present moment, right? So I have to mention this as well uh, because some of the postcards, like these are from Egypt. So I think that mostly here, these traditional costumes, these are really dance costumes. I think these were truly dancers. But for example, um, the photography in Algeria or in Morocco, it seems that the dancers uh, or, or the, the women who are depicting depicted there, uh, they were not, uh, they didn't treat them very well. Sometimes you can see them um, naked or bare breast or how to say it, yeah, uh, the top is, uh, is naked. Well, they were usually very poor. And if the, if the photographer came and kind of persuaded them, hey, I'm going to pay you more, they were impoverished. So of course, like if you can earn a little bit more and not, to let your kids starve, who wouldn't do that, right? So yeah, just keep in mind that it's not all, all glamorous and beautiful and fairy tales, not like that. So this is one, Carte Visite, and here's another one. And camera work and focus well, sorry. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, you can see it better on, on the online museum. Uh, later on. I will have bigger items. Does she have Sagat? Yes, she does. Most of this, this particular one, the other one as well. So most of the dancers you would see on these uh, postcards do have Sagat. Talking about Sagat, I have here another item that is from the World War One. World War One, <laughs> the First World War. Oh, this is so difficult to say. And these are Egyptian sagats. 
finger symbols. Let me show you. These are the finger symbols from 1914 to 1918, some around the time period. And uh, Shining quickly uh, discussed with me how to actually play them better than what I tried to do in my Instagram live because it was embarrassing. If you want to uh, uh, laugh a little bit, please go to my Instagram live. You will have some laugh. <laughs> so let me play them for you because I cannot put them on my fingers. This is uh, the real chord there. It's very damaged and the other one is even broken. You see, so I, I cannot play them. So the way I can do it, Shining helped me out to, to try it, is actually to do this. Or, and actually I know it's just uh, the, the, oh, thank you for saying nice sound. I'm happy you say it because it is nice sound. I know it goes through my camera and through your probably laptop or, or phone. So you just hear, eh, eh, eh. but um, <laughs> the sound is really nice. I have my normal finger symbols I use and they sound horrible comparing to these. So these are finger symbols from early 20th century. Um, these were a souvenir, it seems, because there is this label when I received this from the uh, antique collector. Here's a little label. Okay, this will not be focused by my amazing camera. Of course not. I'm going to read it for you. Castanets from Egypt sent by Berti in war 1914-1918. So it, it seems it was a souvenir uh, sent by, by Berti in World War War. And obviously the sender uh, <laughs> was not a dancer or didn't pay enough attention uh, to, uh, to what the dancers, if he or she saw uh, dancers, because there is only one pair for one hand. So normally you would have to, right? Okay, let me, let me move on. Oh, I have to move on. Uh, I have these special photographs over here. Guys, I'm sorry, I will leave them in the plastic folder. It will look not nice, but these are original silver, silver prints from uh, around 1880s. And so this is truly more than 100 years old. It's like 140 years old prints. And I'm so scared to just take them out of the plastic foil. So these are originals. These are, I mean, uh, there were many copies of these photos in that time period, of course. But this is from Lekehian, one of the most famous photographers. And probably this lady on this photography might be Shafika El Koptia. Okay, there is one. Um, source uh, that named this photography as Shafika, and it might be Shafika and Koptia. Let me just show you quickly at least one photography, how it looks. Oh, I have to be careful, careful. Oh, this is so, I wish you could be here, guys. This is so fragile, the paper. It's so thin. Okay, so this is the, the, the beautiful photography it's just gorgeous Whoa. <laughs> Sorry. to see all the details I'm, sorry, I'm so careful I'm so scared that I would damage it because that would not be good uh, these are not yet on uh, the website I'm going I'm planning to do it after festival okay let me show you the other photographs I will keep them in the plastic folder I'm sure you saw this one it's sometimes copied on postcards as well I have one poster over there as, uh, as well and yeah, this is incredible because this is truly huge. Look how big the photography is, the print. So you can see plenty of details on it. This, is, this was also like a hand. Then one more from like a hand, this one. Again, Egyptian dancer. I hope it's focused. And one more, this is by Zangaki uh, Brothers. And this one is not on any Pinterest <laughs> or any picture collecting um, gallery yet. Look at this. This is so gorgeous. When I saw this, 
I immediately had to have it. Because I never saw this picture before, honestly, online. And it's, um, it's labeled as Turkish dancers. But look at the costume. It's exactly the same as um, was used in, uh, in Egypt. And I quickly searched about Zangaki brothers and they photographed mostly uh, in Egypt. So it's possible that these dancers were Turkish, but performing in Egypt. And there wouldn't be a, an exception. There are plenty of other photographs like this one. This postcard is also labeled, labeled a Turkish dancer, uh, but it's um, postcard um, labeling uh, Cairo, I mean like uh, Egypt, you could send from, from Egypt with the name of Egypt. So it was normal in that time period that foreigners were performing in Egypt, okay? It was always there. And of course, because Egypt was part of Ottoman Empire, um, so the, the flood of people was there. And if you were an artist, where you would go? Where? To the biggest city where, where the... Um, the, the focus is, or, or where the golden era or the boom of your art is, of course. Okay, so these are the postcards. I have to move on. I want to show you, um, blah, blah, blah. I want to show you one little thing. Okay, let's go back to this. See what they have on their necks. So they have these necklaces, right? And especially this lady, thank you very much. Uh, especially these ladies, uh, or this lady, she has this necklace built from coins. And I have such a coin here. <laughs> uh, from that same period, I have more of them here and there. I want to show you this one because this is beautiful and heavy. Uh, this one is from, let me check. This is an Ottoman coin from 17, from time period between 1789 to 1807. So it's truly um, 18 slash beginning of 19th century uh, old coin over here. Okay. It's very heavy and it's big. You can see it comparing to my hand. And you can see the hole in here. So I cannot say, of course, if this particular if this particular coin was um, how is it in English? Worn. Oh, God, all my grammatic mistakes are online and live on YouTube. Anyway, uh, we don't know if it was uh, if any dancer used this because it was uh, kind of normal to use coins and make holes into them and decorate yourself for your wedding, for example, okay? So it might have been uh, just a coin that was used for wedding, but also um, it could have been used by dancer, but that would be really speculative, okay? Now, let me, uh, before we go to golden era, I have to show you, oh, I have to hurry up. I have to show you my stereo views because you can find when you start to collect things, you can find these strange postcards. So these are not postcards, these are stereo views. And this is the earliest, uh, one of the earliest, or uh, 19th century, 3D photography. Seriously, 3D. I will show you in a bit. Let me first go through the stereo graphs or stereo views I have. So here again, this is a gazeya. This is from south of Egypt. Okay, sorry for the reflection, but you can find those uh, on my uh, website. This one is super fun. This is again from South Egypt. Now you, you don't see much, but definitely check on my website because here you can see a guy called Ali Kaka. No, you won't see the details, I think, on the camera. So, And the guy is over here. He's bent over and on his back, there are two dancers sitting on top of him. Uh, more about that Nisa could tell. <laughs> you can visit one of her lectures. Another beautiful stereo view. This is done in studio. It's obvious setting, okay? And another one, again, Egyptian dancer from south of Egypt. These are 1896. Okay, I hope it's a little bit focused. 
No, it's not. Oh, sorry. But again, go ahead and check my website for that. Uh, here is another one. And now it's the time for us to take our 3D glasses. Wait, 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 wait. Before you take the 3D glasses, let me show you how it works. To see it in 3D, really, that you see that, that your brain just do all that magic and you see it in 3D, you need stereo scope that's the stereoscope this is also vintage this is also from 19th century late 19th century uh, so you see there are these glasses uh, there's a holder the holder doesn't work for the size of my stereo views but it's fine it's um, there are different types and what you have to do is you place it over here And you have to look through. Yes. And I, oh my God. I love it. I love it. I know you're just looking at me, how I am enjoying this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but seriously, it's, you can see it in 3D. It's amazing. And when I was published, or well, publishing, when I was talking about this on my Instagram, uh, there was a um, Brooklyn 3D community. Uh, connecting to me and asking me if I can make a presentation for them. So I jumped in and I made presentation about these stereo views for, for them. And then I realized that all those people are incredible collectors of stereo views, not, not focused on belly dance, of course, or Raksharki, but in general, and they have like a huge collections of these instruments. And I was like trying to tell them something. And I realized that I, it's not, I'm not the expert in, in the 3D, in 19th century 3D. So I talked about the history of Raksharki more. And I uh, kept connected. And one of them, Jan, he helped me to transfer this into 3D images that you can see with your 3D glasses. So I'm going to show them to you. It will be pretty fast. So if you have the glasses, Put them on, I'm not sure. Okay, probably it will be just me. <laughs> but let, let's make the tour how it is. Okay, but I cannot see the computer. Uh, so I'm going to share <laughs> with you. <laughs> you know, in golden era movies, there was so much comedy as well. So I think I'm just desperately trying to bring it as well into my presentation. <laughs> so let me show you. So this is one of the images. I'll try to see. This one is pretty tricky to see through the through the glasses, but you have to adjust a little bit your eyes and your focus. Ah, yeah, now I can see it. Ah, it's gorgeous. Really, she's standing out from the from the walls. Uh, you need some practice to watch 3D images through screen. So if this is your first time, don't be disappointed. Just take your time. Go again. Go on my website, and the images are placed there, so you have your time to watch it. There's another one. I want to enjoy it too. Yes, yes. Oh, yo, yo. And you can suddenly so so many details when it's stand out from the background. This one is gorgeous, right? Yes. And look at her hair stuck on her um, arm. I think now we would be very unhappy with this picture, but <laughs> as uh, current belly dancers. <laughs> And another one, this is this one is uh, really set it in a in a setting. And this one is the one with Ali Kaka and the two girls sitting on his back. So at least here you can see it a bit. That here, here are the dancers sitting on the back. Okay. I know it was fast, but let's move on. And before I start my golden era tour for you. This is another section of the of my room. There is time to visit my gramophone over here because I have a premiere for you, especially for this uh, Belly Dance Museum online tour. I just received from my a wonderful um, friend, uh, Kamush in uh, Egypt. He found for me, oh, okay this vinyl record and another one very similar of Badia Masabni and 
so I thought that the year was around 1924, but I tried to double check the information, but there is no mark actually of the year. Uh, but from the sources I have, it seems this is like 1930s, okay? This is 1930s, so yes, it's nearly 100 years old Benel record of Badia Masadi. And this particular one, let me just read it for you. These are monologue, monologue, taklit el mokneyat. Sorry for my Arabic. I, I know, I know, you don't have to tell me anything. I know, it's horrible. <laughs> and I would like to play it for you. So you will hear Badia Masabni voice from Vinyl Record from that time period, the, the real one. Are you excited or it's just me? Yes, you are. Okay, good, good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, you see that the, the, the paper is really, really, really damaged. And I have my beautiful vinyl record over here. Just give me a second. Uh, okay, sorry, give me a second. I let there the old the, the previous vinyl record on there was Farid Al Atrash. So let me just remove it. And let me change the camera so you don't have to see my, my uh, yeah. So you just see the vinyl record. Okay, perfect. So bye bye, Farid. And hello, Badia. The vinyl record is really heavy. Now when I when I place it, I feel how heavy it is. And what I have to do here, I have to change the speed because this is pretty old uh, plate. You cannot play it on every gramophone. You need the speed of 78 um, turns per, per minute. So, okay, it's changed. Let's do it. Yes. Okay, here we go. No, here we go, because I have to press a button. <laughs> okay, now we should go. It's first time, this one you cannot find online anywhere, because uh, the other one I have, you can find the sound on YouTube, somebody already uploaded it. This one, it's, yeah, I never, never find it online, so enjoy. Um, I'm scared that the, the, the needle would slide down, so I'm starting a little bit already in the track, I think. Yep, it's like out. It will take a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. It's stuck over there again. Okay, I'll push it a little bit farther. Thank you. 
Yeah, so, bravo, <laughs> bravo, <laughs> all right, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you enjoyed the, the vinyl record playing, I, I did, it was the first time I heard it as well, so it was premiere for me, I, at one moment I didn't tell you, I was actually scared if it will play, because I didn't try it, uh, but uh, yeah, it worked and I'm very happy about it. So now we are in the, in the second part of my room. This is another collection. Um, you don't see it, but I'm going to show you later. Here under this beautiful ex uh, how to say ex exhibition, and here is another part where everything is stored, layer by layer in silk paper. And there are so many more items I would love to show you, but, but the time. Let me get you, come, I was like with my daughter, <laughs> and we are going to now look at the items together over here. So this, uh, this uh, section is devoted for Egypt, Rakshak in Egypt from 1930s, okay? So we will start actually here with this postcard, again, sorry for the reflection, and sorry for my computer. Okay, up, no, 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 no. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, I have to reconnect the camera again. The technology, now yeah. Okay, it should be back in a bit, yes. <laughs> okay, so here we start with a postcard of Casino Opera. It's really beautiful. This one, you, you could have seen this on the backgrounds of the activities we have prepared for you. Here, this collection, I know it's not that well visible, but this is a collection of advertisements, mostly by Badia Masavmi, all on her clubs and performances. Again, sorry for the reflection, I know, but this is so, so, how to say it, so, um, yeah, damaged the paper and, and, and fragile. I, I don't want to remove it. Here, this one is uh, Peppa as a Dean. This stands over here. Now we go to this, this part. And over here, I love, 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 love this section here. This dancer is called um, Fahmi. I don't know much more about her. This is from 1931. And look at the beautiful costume and the coverage of her hair. It's really gorgeous. Here we go to a movie program. You can see Savia Gamal over here with the lantern. You recognize it as our <laughs> Kanzaman logo. Actually, uh, this is from the movie First Love, 1956. And I've never seen the dance scenes from this movie. It might be that the movie is lost. I quickly discussed with a, with a friend and um, knows a little bit about the movies and it seems that it's not found anymore. And it's a pity because these scenes look amazing. So maybe if some of you ever uh, have ever seen this, please, please let me know or you know where to find this movie. I'll be very happy to, to see it because look at the feet of Samia Gamal. She has ballet shoes there, yes. And the movie program is beautiful inside. So it has many, many pages to, to go through. And I will soon post them on my uh, museum as well. Here is another movie program with Naima Akef. Here is Baladi Wakefa movie program with Naima Akef. Let me show you a little bit. Okay, so this is how it looks inside. I, I'm going to show you some of them a bit later once I put the camera back on the place. Here I have a beautiful donation 
of cassettes. I got these two cassettes from Ksenia from Slovenia. Thank you so much, Ksenia. It's a beautiful gift. I'm not going to unwrap them. I will keep them in the original wrapping, uh, of course. And you can see some vinyl records here as well. So these, this one is again vinyl record of Badia Masabni. Uh, this is Monologue La Spore. And here I have two vinyl records, Naima Ake singing, and behind is Tahia Karioka singing again from 19, uh, I would say 50s, yeah, it's Naima Ake, so it might be 1950s rather than 40s. Here are some advertisements on movies, Egyptian movies. So this is a, 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 a really love the dance scene, by the way, that is depicted here. It's from the Beauty's Veil, uh, 1950, la la la, I cannot remember, sorry. Here we have other advertisements. I'm not going to uh, quickly <laughs> try to remember all the names, but they are over here. You can see even Kati here. This is the dance actor Fairuz, amazing girl. We saw her in Watch Party. Everybody was stunned by her dance skills, so that's her. A few postcards uh, over here. Here is a song book with songs of Farid Al Atrash and other singers. And this item is not Egypt, Egyptian movie or anything like that. I just keep it here because I like it how, oh, you don't see it, here. You see the box? Yes. So this is American movie, Little Egypt, complete fantasy, inaccurate, of course, it's a movie. But I just like to have it here because if I open the box, there is a true eight millimeter movie in it. So if I have the projector, <laughs> one day, I'm going to watch it, but this is without sound, this one actually, okay? And here we go to the uh, bottom section. Here I have these lobby cards. So lobby card, you can see it over, sorry, over here and over here. These lobby cards were placed always um, in the cinema before you would go to see the show, to see the, the movie, you would see these lobby cards to be ex, um, uh, to be to be there so the people could see some of the scenes uh, from the movie you know it was not Instagram <laughs> back then so it was the way to show it and it's beautiful so these are again antique vintage these are not the reprints guys so this is all, all all true and I really love the back one I know you can see just part of it but it's huge it's really huge and lovely and color. Here you can see Samia Gamal um, oh, program when she was dancing in White Car Cargo in the United States. I have the whole thing on Bird Dance Museum. You can read the articles there. I published it, so not published. Well, I just um, uh, yeah showed some of the articles, and uh, uh, yeah, you can find it there. Here is the press photos. I have many of these beautiful press photos in my collection. These press photos were used by newspapers. And I have here this beautiful item. This is Samia Gamal postcard with a signature of Samia Gamal. You can read it here, Samia Gamal. Of course, I for this one, I don't have a certificate because you know, if you call it, uh, uh, how is it, signatures, you don't ask the person to also give you a certificate that it's, real, it's a real person. I hope it's, a, it's real, this one. But I have also another item signed by Samia Gamal. And this one seems to be, well, I have more information about that one. And this signature is in Arabic. So this is the postcard. And here's the signature, where is it? On the veil. Ah, here, see? So this is, these are two signatures of Samia Gamal. Okay, so let me go back. And I think I don't have that much time anymore. Uh, I do, I do, I do, I have five minutes still. Okay, so uh, uh, yes, I'm there and I have to talk here. <laughs> I would like to show you at least some more of the items. I have plenty of magazines. I would love to publish more articles from the magazines 
and um, translate them. Not me personally, I don't speak Arabic, unfortunately. So let me just show you some of them because I have really tens and tens of them. Uh, this is Naima Ake uh, with her husband. Um, oh, now the name just popped out of my head. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. I just can't remember that fast. Uh, here's another beautiful magazine. So some of the magazines are really huge. Look at this one with Samia Gamal and ballet shoes. So you can compare to my to my body how huge it is. And yeah, this one. Then another item I would like to show you. Okay, this one maybe we can skip. Ah, wait, no, at the end. Uh, I'm going to show you some movie brochures. But before that, I'm going to show you also this item. This is, uh, this is not that old, this is 1999, but this is a special issue by Kawake only on Tahia Karaoke, only. So this full magazine is full of pictures of, um, wait, you know guys, like you don't have to see my face, it's not that important. Um, I'm going to do this, hopefully. Yes, this is my chair. And I'm going to show you the magazine this way. Can you can you see it? Yes, you can, right? So let me just go through some of the pages. So you can see really beautiful and old photos of Tahia Karyoka here. Many articles, many articles, you know, those uh, gossip. <laughs> articles that people love to hear about like her husband, her 13 husbands and and why she needed to meet Fifi Abdu uh, before she actually passed away and, and, and so on. So this is full of um, Tahia Karyoka. Yes, I would love to publish everything and I will publish, put it online to, uh, the translation, but if there is a volunteer let me know because to pay all this translation, that's, uh, yeah, it's not that easy. Okay, so this is the magazine of uh, the special issue on Tahia Karyoka. Then, another beautiful item. This is an item, it's a brochure opening of opening new club of Beba S. L. D. It seems, according to this brochure, that she opened a club in Alexandria called Monte Carlo. I didn't know about it before. So let me show you how it looks. So there are all the dancers she she had in the troupe, singers, well, everybody. So you can read, read their names. This is pretty huge, I think. All right, so this is the, this is the brochure. This is from 1938. Let me show you another beautiful movie brochures. Ah, I hear. It means I have five minutes or something like that. You, yeah, you have actually a little bit less than five minutes. You have two minutes, but it's okay. Okay, I will be fast. Um, so last two items I would like to show are these movie brochures. Uh, this is... Is it this one? Wait, let me see my notes. Uh, uh, yeah, I think this is the Ma Masuk El Ayla from 1950s. And it seems, wait, 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 maybe I'm not correct. Let me see inside if I am. Uh, I'm going to show you as well, don't worry, don't worry. I think this is the lost movie as well. It seems it's one of the movies that it was lost. And it's with Tahia Karioka, but the brochure is here. So you see the brochures were beautiful. It's like when you go now to musicals and you buy programs, you would have these programs for movies. We don't do it anymore, unfortunately, because well, the time changed. All right, so this is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous movie uh, brochure. And this one, 
It's Mubi Elam Habib El from 1951. And it features the, uh, again, Tahiya Karioka and the child actor, Fairus. Look at her. I'm sure you maybe saw this dance clip already when she dances uh, in Malaya or sings, not just dances. She was an incredible actor, this girl, and a dancer as we saw in the watch party. Look at this. Isn't it beautiful, right? This is Tahiya Karioka. Oh, it's so nice, this one. And all these scenes, different character dances. Uh, you cannot see the details, but girls, uh, sorry, girls, I, I'm used to say girls, but I mean, everyone, <laughs> dear uh, participants, <laughs> I'm going to publish it, hopefully, um, or post it on my website soon. And the last one, okay? So let me go back to the big camera again. Last, 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 last thing I want to show you, and I really promise, Chrissy, this is the last thing. <laughs> is a poster because I'm that crazy that I even have a um, billboard in my collection. Yes, a real billboard from um, 1956. Huge, huge billboard. I'm not going to show you the billboard because now you're probably thinking, where is it? It's folded. It was sent to me like that. It's folded the layers. And I opened it and I'm going to show you a video how, how it looks when it's open. But before I do that, let me show you a poster. This one is from the movie, uh, I think The Devil's Spa, uh, I think from 19, no, no, sorry. Uh, I cannot find it right now, my, my, my note on this. Ah, yeah, The Devil's Spa, 1963, 1963 with Samia Gamal, Roshdi Abaza as well. I have to be careful not to stress. Okay, here we go. Here it is. It's origin of, uh, original, of course, 1963. Oh. Okay, now carefully back. All right, guys, so that was the brief tour. And let me finish with showing you the video of the billboard. So let me just quickly share my screen. Okay. Here we go. That's it. That's the billboard. <laughs> All right. And here is me again. So guys, thank you so much for watching all this tour. I'm so happy I managed with all the techni technology and cables and, and everything. We did it. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you, Victoria. Thank, thank you. you. Do we have so questions? We have a round of applause for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions before we uh, leave the meeting? Um, I'm just having a look at the chat. Everyone just loves your um, museum. Can't wait to to visit um, when uh, we can. Yeah, if you if you can, Chrissy, find some questions. I just quickly would like to say it's yep. not a museum yet. As you see, it's just my collection trying to just manage all these items and have a little. Um, how is it not exhibition? Well, a little bit of there and there, but I really, my dream is to have a real museum, but you, you, you see it's, it's a lot of finances to have a separate room, big room with all protective materials that will be very expensive. And I, I need to protect it, especially from the UV light and, uh, and so on. Um, 
so this will be costly and it's my passion i will do it one day but i just need time so if uh, if something cannot be immediate just time so give me some time and hopefully one day we can travel again and you can come over here i'll be very happy to make tea for you and my husband will bake some cake <laughs> and, and we can just chat and you, you, you cannot eat the cake uh in the room with the items <laughs> But then, of course, uh, I'm very happy to go through it with you. Um, we have um, uh, perhaps a, a suggestion from Carolina from Croatia. She, um, she says if you would like to send her any of the articles um, of your magazine, she would um, love to take it to her Arabic teacher to translate for you. Oh. So that's a... Uh, okay, thank yeah. you, Carolina. Let's, uh, let's keep in touch. I'll be very happy if uh, there would be some help as well perfect perfect thank you thank you thank you so you learn and, arabic uh, that's great carolina wonderful um and i've <laughs> just put here just earlier when you showed the um photo of naima akef and the, her husband hussein fawzi was the hussein Naima. fawzi yes thank you very much the yes director. yeah mm -hmm. of course yeah the uh, yeah he, he he worked for nahas films and he was the main uh director of most of the movies of naima akef Hussein Fauzi. I had a lecture about it and just, you know, sometimes just, it just disappears. <laughs> I, I don't see any more questions at all. Um, okay. So we can um, take a group photo if you like. Yes, we can have a group photo. And guys, once again, thank you so much for listening. And if you want to support my museum, uh, just go to my website. I'll be very happy if you if you um, follow me there and, and give me some encouragement because <laughs> I do this in my free time. Wonderful. OK, so if everyone, well, if you would like to have a photo, turn your videos on now. Yes. And, to gallery <laughs> and if you don't right. want to, then that's OK. Fix your hair or whatever. OK, here we go. That's ah, it. And we have the, uh, the watch party over there. Hi, guys in Australia. Hi. Hi, oh, yes, <laughs> Hi, everyone. The girls. Everybody to all across the world. Thank you so much for watching. Hi, Michael from Germany. Hi. Yay, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> all right, I'm going to take a couple of photos here. OK, ready? One, two, three. Pick one. Hold on, because it's several. Five. One, two. Oh, here we go. One, two, three, photo two. There we go. Okie dokie. Thank you so much. Uh, what do we have on for the rest of the day? I know for here in, in Australia, we're um, in the afternoon, late afternoon. Um, I'm next with my um, Golden Era Recreation, um, followed by um, Julia Farid. Um, oh, the um, girls from, from the States will be a little bit, uh, yes, I think they'll be going to bed, I think. And um, and then and then followed by Melissa Roshana Karoban, and then finally our discussion. Our discussion panel is our last free event, um, and we are hoping to uh, stream that uh, to YouTube as well. We're live streaming right now as well. I would like Adria. to just, if yes. I can uh, say three, maybe four things. <laughs> um, Yes, uh, for Roshana's workshop, because I have people right now watching me, uh, you received an email, make sure that your hair is already rolled, okay, to really, to make the beauty vintage, let's do it all together, roll your hair, you have tutorial in your mail just to roll it up, and then we can finish with Roshana all the makeup and hair, so please, 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 I really want to see people with her, with the rollers in their hair, I'm going to do it, I, I'm seriously, I'm working so much with Chrissy and Shayla, but I'm going to roll my hair, so please roll it too. <laughs> and we can do all this um, tutorial by Roshana together. For the last discussion, because it will be the last event, um, we are planning as organizers to have a little, little drink. It doesn't have to be alcoholic drink. So if you want, just have a glass of wine or some soda or whatever you love, tea. And so we can cheer at the end together. That would be very nice. And you still can expect an, an email from us with some last uh, fun activity yes <laughs> last fun activity that's it <laughs> thank you very much everyone wonderful thank you everyone um we'll sign out now yeah thank you bye-bye <laughs>